Hi, I'm Dr. Cash, and this is Dr. Cash in Medical and Life. Today we'll be talking about a topic or conditions that can be pretty frightening to uh, any parents out there. And certainly it happened personally to myself and my wife. Uh, about a few years ago, our daughter at that time was seven years old. And she woke up early one Saturday morning. It started crawling and crawling on the floor into our bedroom and crying. And she said that her calves were painful. She couldn't stand. She couldn't walk. That's why she was crawling. And so as any concerning parents would do, both of us freaked out as well. Okay. Uh, particularly my wife. Um, as a physician, I was puzzled. I was like, oh, what happened? You know, it just happened so suddenly overnight. And so we got her into the emergency room and was examined by the emergency room doctor. Her examination pretty much was normal other than the fact that she has uh, calf tenderness, but heart, lungs, muscle tones, muscle strength, uh, sensation, uh, all of those were completely normal. She then also had some lab tests done which included a urinalysis, which examined her uh, urine, checking for any kidney kind of uh, conditions. Also, a white blood cell count of CBC, uh, which uh, also checked for any kind of uh, infection, as well as kidney function, liver functions, and even a chest x-ray. All of those things came back essentially normal except one thing, and that was the CPK, creatine phosphate kinase. And that level was at 1400. Now, normal is uh, 150 or lower. So 1400 is close to 10 times the normal limit, a normal range. And so clearly something was going on. That's why she started having the uh, significant muscle aches and pain in her calves and she was having difficulty with her walking. So the emergency room doctor called the pediatrician and the pediatrician came, talked to us, did a little bit of research and came up with the conclusion um, that most likely our daughter had a condition called benign acute childhood myositis, okay? So benign acute childhood myositis. Now this is a condition that is quite rare, but certainly when it does occur, it can certainly be quite frightful because some, suddenly your, your kid who was doing okay um, is no longer able to walk. Okay, so the worst case scenario kind of pop in your head. Is my child going to be disabled for the rest of her life? Is she going to ever walk again? You know, so all of those things crosses your mind. So it can be pretty scary. But the most reassuring thing for us at that time was the fact that since it's benign, it would be something that it would not have any long-term effect on her in the long run. And so we were reassured and the pediatrician instructed us to certainly give plenty of water to, to the child to keep her hydrated as well as going back in a few days to recheck her kidney functions as well as recheck the CPK uh, just to make sure that uh, it is coming back to normal um, and just to have a follow-up. And so we did. So a few days later, we went back, checked the urine, continued to, uh, to be fine, and we rechecked the CPK or um, the uh, creatine phosphokinase and that uh, was also normal at that time as well. So what is this condition? Benign acute childhood myositis. Well, let's break that down a little bit. Benign, meaning it's something that is doesn't harm you, uh, particularly in the long run. Um, acute, meaning it just happened so suddenly. 
uh, childhood means it will normally only happen in childhood. Now, normally, it, statistically, it happens usually in kids between uh, 2 years old to about 12, 13 years old. And myositis, myositis, that word means just inflammations of the, uh, of the muscle, okay? So there's something benign, something that just happens suddenly, and also something that usually occurs in little kids uh, that uh, it's caused by muscle inflammation. Now that question, the next question, what caused the muscle inflammation? Okay, so study has shown that usually with this children with this condition, normally they're preceded by some kind of viral illness of some sort at least a few days or a week before. And sure enough, you know, when our daughter, when that happened, um, everyone in the family uh, was sick uh, with fever, with chills, body aches and pain, runny nose, stuffy nose, and the whole deal. And everyone also was recovering, uh, including our daughter. And so we had some kind of viral infection of some sort, but for her, unfortunately, it le led to this episode for her. Um, so further studies have shown that actually it's caused by or resulted uh, from having some form of viral infection. Usually 70% of the time is by the influenza virus. And then a few other ones can also uh, trigger that. Uh, these would include like adenovirus, Coxsackie virus, echovirus, and lastly, even a bacteria, although it's rare, less than 1% of the time, called mycoplasma pneumonia can also uh, cause this as well. Okay. Now, what are some of the clinical presentations or clinical signs that you will have if you do have this. Again, most people will be preceded with having some kind of viral syndrome, prodromes, and recovering from it, and then leading to uh, the most common uh, signs or physical examinations will find that uh, the sign would be that the child would have muscle um, pain in the calf muscle, either the gastrocnemius or the solus muscle, both sides symmetrically, and they would have a gait where because of the pain, they, they just can't walk. It's difficult to walk. Or they were just tiptoeing, walking on their toes uh, because it's so painful. And they start crying and such. So those are some of the um, signs and symptoms. And then on examination, you should have uh, pretty much a normal uh, lab examination. Uh, kidney should be normal. Liver should be normal. White, white blood cell count normally should be normal. Uh, the only thing that normally is seen or commonly is seen is that you will have a elevated CPK or uh, creatine phosphokinase that will be elevated anywhere from a few hundreds to um, about 10 times normal, which is about 14, 1500. And in our daughter's case, it was 1400, so it fell right, it fell right into that. And Overall, usually this condition affected boy about two-thirds of the time and then girl the rest of the time. And based on the study, pretty much all the, the, the children that uh, uh, were affected by that recovered without any long-term complications or problems. On occasion, maybe about 5% of the time, some of the children may have recurrence of that happening but again, no long-term complications or problem. And so that should be great and should be reassuring to the parents who may have a child that may be affected by this condition. Well, I hope that this will help shed some light into understanding this uh, condition. And uh, if you're a parent, uh, don't be alarmed if your doctor has done the complete evaluation and has reassured you, then I think your child will be okay uh, just as long as you continue to have close, pay close attention to uh, your child and have do all the follow-up, whether it be some urine tests and blood tests, or just keeping an eye on the child. And certainly if it doesn't get better and gets worse and follow up and, and get further evaluation. But most invariably, your child will be fine if the diagnosis that was given 
is benign acute childhood myositis. Well, thank you for joining us. If you enjoy these kind of uh, materials and that if you learn anything or something from this, I hope that you will consider subscribing to our channel, press the um, bell notification, and join us again next time. Stay healthy, stay happy, and see you next time. Have a good one.